Technology has changed the face of deer hunting, but there are a few hunters that have held on to the basics of the past. This is a story of the lost art of deer tracking. Feels good to get one. About a week into the Minnesota rifle season, a good snowstorm hit. I decided to meet up with Todd Havel of Misty River Trackers, and we were going to go do some buck tracking together. I guess Todd went to get the camper going and got it stuck, so <laughs> we'll see if I got to help pull him out. <laughs> I'll show you my big boo boo right off the bat. Then let's get this right on film. I oh. knocked my spirit tire right off the back and I, I dented my my door. Oh I, no. I bumped that tree. I, I worked so hard to get that tire in that hole so it would level out. <laughs> Why are we so tired right now? Stayed up too late talking, huh? No. You can't help but get a deer now. You got lucky charms. Yeah, I got the lucky charms. You bring a grunt tube with very often? Yeah, I never use it, but I always bring it. <laughs> well, hey, good luck today. Yeah, go get them. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. With a fresh coat of wet, packy snow, the conditions were perfect for tracking. We set out that morning with high hopes. Okay, here we go. All right, so I already found a decent track. This one, the size of the track looks what I'm hoping for. Didn't really see much for dew claw marks though, so that's the only thing that's kind of like, eh, I'd like to see a little heavier on that, but you know, so far there's been tracks. I mean, the deer are up on their feet and they're crossing these roads, so, you know, it's a lot better than I was anticipating. Hello. Hey. I'm, I'm not a mile away from camp and I've already saw, I've already saw tracks of about four or five bruisers. I mean, it's amazing, but they're all hanging around this private land here, yeah. so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get on any of them. Yeah, yeah, shoot. I was finding a bunch of tracks, and then it kind of dried up here. I'm getting way back in deep into the woods, and I mean, I know I've got two options right now. Is it laying heavy dew claws down or not? None of the tracks that I found so far are really laying down heavy dew claws, but I'm wondering if, like, they just got up on their feet, you know, from the snow kind of letting up and... They got a lot of energy, I don't know. I don't know, the ones I'm seeing, they're laying their new claws down really good. Oh, they are, okay. Well, maybe, I'll, I'll keep driving around a little bit and see what I find. All right, I just found a pretty good track. All right, that's a pretty good look at that track. It's a good wide track. Pretty fresh, it's alone. Good dew claws, nice wide boxy track. Even the length of it is nice from tip to dew claw. I think I'm gonna take this track. All right, let's go head in on this track. The day started out with great promise, but ended up being a very difficult day of tracking for both Todd and I. The deer I followed ended up getting into a high deer density area. With all the fresh deer tracks everywhere, it was making it impossible to sort it out. The other issue is that I ran into a hunter on his stand. I tried a couple other tracks, but nothing panned out. Todd followed a nice track the rest of that day, but did not catch up to that deer. We headed back to the camper that evening, a little deflated. Man, I never thought I was going to do that to myself today. <laughs> <laughs> was that a pretty decent track you were on? It was a nice track, but he went through some stuff that really question, made me question. No, they can if it's whippy, and they will. I've seen big bucks go through some nasty, nasty stuff. 
Ooh, I hope I feel better than this tomorrow. All right, best of luck, Todd. All right, same to you. Yep, have fun. Having any luck yet? No, some tracks, but nothing big. Yeah, I found one track that looked big. It was only like two or three sets of the track that looked big, and then the other ones were kind of like, I don't know. It didn't really have any snow in it, so, you know, it had to have been probably from last night then, wouldn't you think? Yep, yep. I'm going to go hustle back and get on and see if I can get on that track. All right, well, why don't you go? Yep. I'm going to have to pull over here, too, and Mother Nature's calling. <laughs> Oh, I'll take care of business, dude. <laughs> What do you think when you see that? It looks like it's more of a running to me than a walk. It does? Okay. Is that a problem? Well, it is for size. Yeah. Normally a decent track will be two boots. So there should be two, there should be a track, and there should be a track. Yeah. And I have a feeling this is a right foot, that's a left foot right there. So in other words, he's taking a four foot span, which is a, a heavy trot. His toes are squared up yet. Yeah. When you see these, these lesser deer when they're running, like this one here, see how his toes are pointing outward? Yep. Point outward, outward? Yep. Which means he's hitting and he's going mm. Which this one here, he's squared. So I wouldn't lose faith on this track. That's a nice wide track and his dudes are hitting hard, but, but he's trotting. Isn't that sunrise just amazing? smells like versus an eight hour OP but if you do it you'll know because you do get into some that you know is really really fresh and you'll be like wow it really hits you yeah and then you as every hour goes by it, it degrades yeah you know you don't smell too much with that one you no know, it's 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 not real fresh so so that might be one of the reasons why the bed didn't smell it's just so long ago I would say going by all the data we have on this thing is probably six eight hours old maybe okay. it's not real hot okay another thing too when you come up to these turds pick them up and squeeze them big eight pointer i shot in michigan it was 18 degrees that day and i picked up a turd and i squeezed it like butter like i just got really cranked up because i knew at 18 degrees that turd wasn't going to stay soft very long it was less than 100 yards i shot him wow we found some old man's beard that he was eating on and you get to see Todd's purple gloves. <laughs> Refer to me as the tracker formerly known as Prince. <laughs> that happens a lot in them. On them road crossings, you get fooled. Yeah. The track size, you gotta be really cautious when you're picking tracks by the road. Yep. They have a tendency to scoop pretty fast and then they lay back. Yep. We continued to follow the track but it wasn't quite what we were looking for. 
It is always best to follow a mature buck because their track is easy to follow since it is bigger than all the other deer tracks. So you are less likely to get turned off on the wrong track. At this point Nathan had to head home, but I stayed in Minnesota and continued to hunt. Unfortunately on this hunt, my truck broke down. I had a front axle go out, but fortunately, a good friend of mine, Dave, who lived in the area, offered me his shop and tools and helped me repair my truck. And he also pointed me in the direction where I eventually shot my deer. So I just want to give a shout out to Dave for all his help. Thank you, Dave. I found several good tracks, but this one was the freshest, so I decided to take it. I just shot at one. Unfortunately, I'm about 99% sure I missed. Now, well, here's what's his bed. And that's a pretty nice deer. I'll follow up a little bit on the shot, see what happens, but I don't hold much hope. Good to finally get one. Oh man, wonderful. Okay, this is my 2021 uh, rifle season buck from Minnesota. I took him tracking. I freshened him up about uh, a quarter mile north of where I picked him up. I took a little hair off of him and that was it. When I gave him about an hour and a half to settle down, I took up the track again and turned and headed south and he actually ran back across the road about 100 yards from my truck and continued to run for about a half a mile without stopping and then he finally slowed down and he turned right hooked right and he bedded down i was fortunate he he actually had come up out of his bed and he was actually paralleling me when i come up on him it was a nice track because i had a standing or walking shot instead of one running and i put one good one in him and i 
two more as he was running away, but that one was all that was needed. So a beautiful track job and not a real long one, but a successful one for sure. The only thing you need to get that deer into that truck is this, is a chunk of rope and just go right around his horns. And this is just to get the head up to you. That's it. And then once you get it up to you, you grab him and you just pull him up. Oh, he's getting stiff. There. No, I don't have to do it. No. Nope. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out a way to get around it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I gotta run the camera. I, I, I can't do it if I'm working the camera. You were dead on. Hey, hey, can you say that again? Uh, Nathan was absolutely dead on with the weight. Yeah, what, what, what did I say? 190. And what did we get? 190. He's the pro. Hey, you can tell me I'm right again, huh? <laughs> That's a nice deer. That's a beast. Join me on my YouTube channel, Misty River Trackers, to see a video where I break down the technical aspects of this track job. Click the link posted here.